It's been a long time since they've had peace in the Middle East. Uh, step one is to have a vision for what peace would look like. And uh, in 2002, uh, on the steps of the uh, uh, Rose Garden, I gave a speech about a, a, a two-state solution. Uh, two states, two democracies living side by side in peace, and we have worked hard to advance that idea. First thing is to convince all parties that the two states were necessary for peace. And one thing has happened is, is that most people in the Middle East now accept the two-state solution as the best way for peace. Most Palestinians want their own state, and most Israelis understand there needs to be a democracy on their border in order for there to be long-lasting peace. When the history of Iraq is written, uh, historians will analyze, for example, the decision on the surge. Uh, the situation was uh, looked like it was going fine, and then violence for a period of time began to throw um, throw the progress of Iraq into doubt. And rather than accepting the status quo and saying, "Oh, it's not worth it," or the politics makes it difficult, or you know, the party may end up being you know, not doing well in the elections because of the violence in Iraq, I decided to do something about it and sent 30,000 troops in as opposed to withdrawing. Uh, and so that part of history is certain, and, and the situation did change. Now, the question is, in the long run, will this democracy survive? And that's going to be the challenge for future presidents. Now, obviously, these are very difficult economic times. It's, um, when, when people analyze the situation, there will be uh, uh, this problem started before my presidency, obviously took place during my presidency. The question facing a president is not when the problem started, but what did you do about it when you recognized the problem? And I readily concede, I chunked aside some of my free market principles when I was told by chief economic advisors that the situation we were facing could be worse than the Great Depression.